People who have had a stalker, how did you realize you were being stalked? Part 7. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Was at work. New guy. A few months and a girl took a liking to me when I had helped her with something. She seemed cool, so I thought it would be cool to make friends with her since I was newer around there. We only hung out in group settings, so there was no, like, questionable 1.1 things going on. One night she kissed me, and I kind of just told her that I do like hanging out with her and just need some time to think about things before considering moving forward, cause I just wasn't expecting that. She looked angry rather than sad but didn't make a scene, flash, forward to the next day at work, and she seemed back to normal, no anger or weirdness, so it was all good. Then after work, we're all walking out as a group, and I'm talking to her about how I have a new manager, and she blurts out that they are childhood best friends and that she'll put in a good word for me. That night, the weird threatening texts begin about how she's gonna ruin my career if I don't give us a chance, and 20-year-old me was stupid enough to not go right to HR. I didn't really plan to give us a chance, but felt unsafe detaching from the friend group. Two days go by and I find out she's telling everyone that we are together. And everyone was all for it without ever really confirming with me. And I started feeling super trapped. For days, she was texting me about how ill be taking her away for the weekend and make our first date such a big thing. That is until about four days after that, I'm in a meeting with my boss and he goes, who's that girl that keeps skulking around by your cubicle? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he points out the window area and there she is like, watching my cubicle, me instantly realizing he has no clue who she is. I hand him my phone and go, apparently not your childhood best friend. After all, he reads the messages, walks over to her and chases her away then walks me to HR. She was ordered to stay away from me while they investigated, and the next day she came in with bandages all over her face and spread a rumor that I did it. For a few days, everyone believed her, until someone mentioned the timelines didn't match up, because when she claimed I did it, I was working a security gig at a concert he went to, I, she was fired after that. Had a couple of years of fallout after that because, you know, I'm a 6.1 male, so we don't get instantly believed in those scenarios, but I survived it. Account 2. Not that crazy of a story, but I had met a guy on Hinge that I talked to for about a week and a half. He was the first guy I'd ever met online, and he was nice, nerdy, shared a lot of interests. I just ended up getting a really bad feeling about him, and I ended up breaking it off. He tried to guilt me into staying with him, saying stuff like, I was going to give up after you, and I already deleted the app. I stood firm, and for the next two weeks, he stalked me. He sent me a long poem-like message about how we just didn't meet at the right time or something. Then a day or two later, a note was left on my car at home, and occasionally I'd see his car in the neighborhood. He is friends with my next-door neighbor, but still it was sus. Eventually, I heard nothing. Never saw his car, and I could move on with my life. Didn't use Hinge at all after that low L. Account 3. Fifth and sixth grade. I lived two houses away from Donnie. He was in ninth grade and had a crush on me. It started when the house next to mine, Meth House, burned down, and the neighborhood kids started playing in the empty lot, usually freeze tag. Donnie would only tag me. Wouldn't even try for anyone else, and if he couldn't tag me, he would cry saying his grandpa had just died. The kid would have had like 1,000 grandpas, so to avoid his annoying crying, I let him tag me sometimes, but honestly, it made the game no fun. So we stopped inviting him around. His mom yelled at us for bullying him by excluding him, so we all stopped hanging out. Well, he just started knocking on my door every hour to see if we could come play yet. Sometimes my mom would say we had homework to finish, but most of the time mom made me go out and play with him because she felt bad for him. Then he started looking in my window, face pressed to the screen to see if I was home. I keep my curtains closed all the time now. Mom still made me go play with him. When he could no longer see in my windows, he started giving me little gifts. Rings for when we got married, rings to promise I would be his heart-shaped candles, poems copied off the internet, heart tattoos and stickers. I'd try to deny them. 
I tried forgetting them in the empty lot only to find them left on our doorstep. Finally, another older kid, eighth grade, in the neighborhood got tired of Donnie's shit and asked me to bring him everything Donnie had ever given me. He called Donnie over and smashed everything with a hammer in front of him and told Donnie if he didn't leave me alone, he'd be next. Donnie cried and raged at me until he saw the hammer swung in his direction. Not even close enough to hit him, just enough to know this kid meant business. Then he ran home to his mom who yelled at us for bullying him and my mom said we could have let him down a little nicer. Donnie still begged for me to come out and play, but I refused with crying fits until my mom stopped making me go play with him, and we ended up moving the next year. Account 4. I had a stalker in the seventh grade. He stated my address and described my parents. I sat next to him in science, and he had a habit of pissing me off. Whenever I told my mom that he would tell me something about myself I had never shared with him, she just told me he was just guessing. It got to be too much for me when he told me that he would kill my parents and my dog. I was scared shitless. This kid knew my address and what my parents looked like. He could actually kill them, not legally, but still. We emailed my science teacher and asked her to move me to a different table. I was moved and never talked to him again. I was only 12 at the time, so you can imagine how scared I was. I met my best friends at the new table, though. Account 5. An ex? I ended our relationship after he started becoming controlling and abusive. I knew he was stalking me because I'd see him wherever I went. I'd stop at a drive through to get something to eat after work, and he'd be parked in the parking lot, watching the drive through line. I'd go to the mall, and he'd be sitting on a bench. I'd go to a movie with a friend. And when we left, he was sitting in the last row. I'd go to a restaurant with my mom, and he'd be at a table in the corner. This went on for a couple of years. After I met someone else, he started showing up where I lived, would drive by my apartment building, idle his car on the street outside my window. He'd follow people into the gate and be seen walking around the complex. It culminated when he got into my apartment and assaulted me. After that, I moved in with my now husband and the stalking stopped. Years later, I found out that a close friend of mine had been having an affair with him and giving him information about my schedule and movements. That's how he knew where I'd be and when I'd be there, and also when I would be alone in my apartment. Six. In school, I was friends with his sister who went to a different school and didn't live with him because he had issues. When he found out about me, he stalked her. He found out about my class schedule. Same year, different class. He'd be there waiting for me and follow me to my next class, just walking behind me, breathing down my neck. In the big breaks, he'd luckily be in the bathroom doing drugs. For a while, we had philosophy class together, and he'd just sit there at the wall staring at me, banging his head against the wall. Then one day, my friend told me to be careful because he'd texted her. I've never heard him talk a single word. B.W. Something about me. The next day, I got to school late and was greeted by police. There was an attempted shooting by an unnamed person who claimed to only want to shoot one specific person and couldn't find them. So it was ended without anything happening. Never saw him again. Though I did find out that he ended up in prison. He'd been on parole already, and that yes, he meant me. Fun times. Account 7. When I was 14, I met a guy on MySpace, as one does who was 21 already gross, I know. We exchanged phone numbers and talked for a few days before he threw a fit because I told him that I smoked occasionally and called me a burnout and a loser, blah, blah. Then, hours later, sent some unwanted, unsolicited nudies and I had to tell him to put that shit away and that I wasn't interested in talking anymore because he made me uncomfortable. We talked for 3.4 days, tops. He continued reaching out, even after I mentioned that he could go to prison for what he sent me and blocked him on everything. For years, he made fake profiles to contact me, wrote me an email that said he tried every combination of my name, Yahoo, Hotmail, Gmail, etc., hoping one of them would belong to me. The scariest incident occurred when I was having lunch with a friend in my city about an hour from where he told me he lived years earlier and I got a text from an unknown number with a picture of the restaurant I was at. That said, was in the area and am thinking about getting lunch here. 
Care to join me? I searched the number, and it was registered in his mom's name. I have never been so creeped out. Thankfully, I think he's moved on. Though, I did get a message request from an account that was consistent with his other fake accounts on Instagram last summer, and I'm 25 now. 8. This girl accused me of sexually harassing her after I inquired about her crush. Then the next day and several times over the next few months, she sent cops to my dorm room to search for various things like guns and stuff. You know, normal college stuff. Then came the rape accusations. They were actually about my boyfriend being raped. He showed up and denied it, of course. Finally, she tried getting a restraining order because she kept seeing me around 99-acre campus that we both live in. In it, she said I kept trying to contact her when I never did. It's been about two years now, and she spread the story and I got a death threat at one point in the middle of Zoom. I know it sounds like there must be more to it, like I egged her on or something, but no, she's fucking obsessed with me. Recently, she and her friends take over the small Discord server we have for the school. I'm autistic, so I don't talk much to people, and the Discord server was only like five people who would talk, and when she showed up with other people... I admittedly did piss them off for various reasons for which I'd like to apologize. Half the server became her and her friends. She just couldn't let me have it this small respite. She's obsessed with me and I can't do anything about it. Count nine, 18-year-old trans. Guy here. When I first started transitioning, I was 15. There weren't many queer people in my school. I didn't really care too much about it because I was comfortable with myself. But there was this boy in my year level who had never met a trans person before and slowly became obsessed with me. He would leave anonymous notes saying, Your brain intrigues me. And, I want to take photos of your body before and after surgeries. It was really weird. Anyways, he started following me home and calling me his Ken, Barbie, because I would always explain being trans for me as someone had put a Ken head on a Barbie body, which really started to make me uncomfortable. Not long after I received his 50th note, I was home alone, and he showed up at my front door with a ring and a bunch naked photos of me getting changed in my room. He said to me that he was devoted to me and wanted me to be his forever. I ended up calling the police, and I haven't seen him since. But I've never been so scared for my life, and to this day, I hate being home alone. Account 10 some dude used to stalk me thinking I didn't know one day I decided to take a, a shortcut. To totally go home from an alley and didn't have six lads beat him up and he didn't get his right leg, two rib bones, and his left shoulder broken. Count 11. The night security guard at my uni dorm stalked me, got my campus number and texted all hours of the night, would send people to my room to bring me down to talk to him at the front desk at three in the morning, weird guy. Seriously creepy, I reported him. Turns out he had done the same thing to a different person at the dorm next to mine. They moved him one dorm over after I filed a complaint instead of firing him. Still angers me to this day. Account 12. He was a customer at a uni cafe I worked at. He would follow me around all the time, wait for me outside classes, linger behind me at the bus stop. Despite my obvious discomfort with it, all my work friends were worried and helped me make complaints to the uni. He was given a warning but kept doing it, but I was changing jobs and uni soon anyway, so I just assumed it would go away. After I left, he started turning up randomly to places I was at, movies, clubs, shopping centers. I eventually figured out that even though I'd blocked him on all social media, he was finding me through my friend's posts and photos. Every time me or my friend saw him, we'd tell him to go away and stop stalking me. He'd only leave when we threatened to call the police. The final straw was when he turned up to my job. I was months into my new job. In a whole new town, as a PA for a lawyer, our office was in a high security building. You needed to swipe your pass at a few different points just to get to the front door. I had been fielding a lot of strange calls for weeks. Just someone breathing down the phone. I had suspicions it was him, so I told my boss about the calls so he was aware. One day I got a call, and after some time of heavy breathing, he said, Hello, it's name, let's hang out today. I told him firmly to leave me alone, otherwise I'd call the police. Why would you do that, I like you? He whispered as he stood right in front of me. He had managed to trick one of the other lawyers to let him up by saying he knew me. I instinctively yelled, What are you doing here? 
and my boss heard and guessed what was going on and ran to my aid. Pushing the guy out of the office, I was in shock and crying and filed a police report that day. The following day, I received another call at my office. It was the guy's mom. She told me that she was so sorry about what had happened and that I wasn't the first girl he had done this to. She said they were getting him help and taking away his phone and car, and she would ensure he would never contact me again. And I never did hear from him again. But I couldn't walk anywhere alone for a fair few months after that. Account 13. I was stalked by an ex for 18 months. I don't remember the exact moment that I attached the word stalked to what was happening, but it was probably a few months in. Right from when we broke up, he was sending me upwards of 100 texts or emails a day, showing up at my house at any hours of the day and night and just staring in the windows or throwing things to get attention. When I didn't answer my personal mobile, he would call my work phone to figure out if I was in the office or not. I ended up agreeing with my boss that I didn't need to answer any calls from external numbers on my work phone. He was using different phones within his office to get me to pick up because I wouldn't recognize the numbers. He then took to calling the reception and pretending to be customers or delivery companies, asking if I was at my desk. If he found out I was there, he would turn up and wait for me. My organization assigned a security guard to walk me to my car at night to ensure I got safely off the property. I'd park a mile away from my house so that my car wouldn't be outside, and I lived with the curtains closed 100 of the time for months so no one could see in. He also called my parents or friends and would say he has been hospitalized in an accident and needed me to get in touch. It was relentless. After about eight months, I decided to move house and get a new car to have a bit of anonymity again. The texts, emails, and calls didn't stop. I did contact the police about six months in, who told me, incorrectly, his actions weren't illegal. About 18 months in, I contacted the police again after a particularly scary incident, and an officer came out to speak to me. I still remember her reading some of the texts, emails he'd sent, and telling me this was the worst case of stalking she'd seen in her policing career, and that I was going to end up dead if it carried on. That was the first time someone had been really honest with me about how bad the situation was, and I'll always be grateful to her. He was convicted of stalking me in court, handed a sizable community service order and a restraining order, and he's finally gone from my life. Account 14. This motherfucker literally tracked me down on social media and messaged me to tell me that he was watching me at my work. I had no idea who he was, no picture to tell if I'd seen him before. I knew it was true because he described a conversation he'd had with me as a patient, which could have been anyone as I saw hundreds of patients a day. He also described what I looked like at work. He had the audacity to ask me to go on a date with him. Anyway, I blocked him, changed my name on my socials to something less identifiable from my name badge, switched jobs, and haven't heard from him since. Account 15. Dude was my co-worker. My first week I was getting to know people in my department and we found out we lived on the same street. He said that he drove into work and offered to carpool sometime. The one and only time I carpooled with him, he told me that he knew the apartment complex I lived at. And I know for a fact... I never mentioned the apartment complex. I also found out that he knew my apartment number. I wanted to jump out of the moving car. The next day, I went straight to the leasing office, and the guy there was like, Oh, I remember him. Yes, he said he was your co-worker and needed to drop something off to you. So I gave him your apartment number. The manager was there, too, and got really upset because I said the guy was stalking me. I told another co-worker who worked in IT, and he told me to report him to HR. I did. Not sure what happened after, but after about a month, I no longer saw him at work. 